Testimony has wrapped up for the day in the Alec Murdoch double murder trial in Walterboro. Day 13 had some unexpected twists and turns, but it was what happened outside of the courtroom that caused most of that excitement. Our team coverage continuing for you right now outside of the Colladin County Courthouse. Raphael James is at the courthouse where things got hectic around lunchtime when the courtroom had to be cleared, Roth. That's right. Basically, someone called in a threat to the courthouse and the judge had to clear the courtroom. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to evacuate the building uh, at this time. So we'll be in recess until we discover what's going on. Behind me, you see these double doors. Those are the doors to the courtroom. Again, this building is 200 years old. They're not used much anymore because everyone goes through security now at the bottom of the stairwell before they can uh, be it gain entrance into the courtroom. Well, today, an emergency made the use of those double doors necessary. Now, after a couple of hours, the all clear was given and people were allowed to go back into the courtroom as testimony resumed as the state continues to build its financial evidence, financial crimes as evidence with testimony uh, today. Uh, more witnesses took the stand. Blair Sable is here now with more on why a video that they were forced to watch again is so significant to this case. We're off today. We heard yet another witness testified that they hear Alec Murdoch's voice on the video that Paul shot shortly before his death. And so far, every witness that the state has asked about this says they were 100% confident. This is coming from Murdoch's former colleagues and Paul's friends who can place Alec Murdoch at the scene of the crime uh, because they hear his voice on this video that was shot at 8:44 p.m. on June 7th, 2021, just before the victims phones went silent. Earlier today, we also heard from the state's gunshot residue expert again during the defense's cross-examination. Megan Fletcher said 38 of the 52 total particles that were found on the blue raincoat that Murdoch allegedly brought to his mother's house a few days after the murders were found on the inside. Defense attorney Jim Griffin points out the science only goes so far. You have no idea how gunshot primer residue ended up on that garment, correct? I cannot tell you how it got there. Okay. Or when it got there. Or when it got there. In the courthouse as law enforcement investigated. We also heard from Michael Gunn of Forge Consulting LLC, who confirmed that the company has no association with the personal account Murdoch was used was using simply named Forge to allegedly steal millions of dollars from his clients. And that same company put out a statement earlier today saying that they were considering going after Murdoch legally for using their brand for these illegal acts. Roth. Thank you very much, Blair. Another former colleague of Alec Murdoch's sat in the witness box today. She's a paralegal with the firm where Alec Murdoch worked, and she says she worked with him for nine years. Emily Zuhowski heard her testimony from inside the courthouse. Longtime former colleague Griswold says Alec had been lying to her the whole time about his alleged financial misdeeds. She said when she found out she was feeling all of the emotions, hurt, angry, enraged. This after she says she went into, quote, mama bear mode for the family after the murders. Griswold says she was very worried about Alec Buster and the rest of the family after the murder. She said any inquiries about Alec's misappropriation of funds didn't matter anymore, and that was the last thing on her mind. She says her primary focus was Alec, you know, making sure she, he was okay. She remembers how scared she and her other colleagues were, worried about possible threats to the law office and the media frenzy. But then Griswold says she was looking for a file in Murdoch's office on September 2nd, 2021 and a check fell out fell from the file. It was one of the missing fee checks made out to Murdoch that was written in March. She says that's when she knew he lied and stole money. The state presented in court a text message Alex sent to Griswold and another paralegal while he was in rehab. Here's Griswold reading part of that message. I have been worried about y'all and I'm sorry I didn't get to tell y'all myself. I know both of you been hurt badly by me. I know it sounds hollow, but I am truly sorry. 
The better I get, the more guilt I have. I have an awful lot to try to make right when I get out of here. The worst part is knowing I did the most damage to those I love the most. I'm not real sure how I let myself get where I did. I'm committed to getting better and hope to mend as many relationships as I can. You both are special people and important to me. Please know how sorry I am to have made you part of my misdeeds. And she joins other close former colleagues, Ronnie Crosby and Jean Seconder, who both spoke yesterday about their disbelief surrounding Alex's alleged financial crimes and the time surrounding Maggie and Paul's murders. Roth. All right, Emily, thank you very much. And now things wrapped up a little earlier today. Normally things go to about 530. Today it was over at about 440. And considering everything that this jury has gone through today, Many of them probably welcome that reprieve. In Colleton County, Raphael James, back to you. Yeah, I'm sure everyone glad to get home just a little bit earlier today. All right, thanks, Roth. We will be back in the courtroom for you. We will be there throughout the trial, bringing you the latest on air and online with our streaming service. Our live five team coverage of the Murdoch murder trial will continue at six o'clock this evening.